I'm Dr. Jim Anderson, and I'm here to talk to you about your restless legs. And I'm here to talk to you not about magnesium, potassium, and dopamine. I, a lot of you that have restless legs have heard that you can monitor these and evaluate them and maybe take medications, especially for dopamine levels that, that might in some way affect your restless legs. And I'm not here to argue that that doesn't help in some way, but I'm here to talk to you about your restless legs being in your legs, the problem that is being in your legs. Most of you have these symptoms from the knee down and I'm gonna share with you science. Science that we can show you to demonstrate that your restless legs for many of you, in fact, most of you, I think, can be from tight tunnels. Compression of nerve pathways in your, in your lower leg. First thing I wanna mention, and again, this is science, this is a peer reviewed paper that's been published in Frontiers in Neurology and it's about nerve decompression. So that's the first paper we published. We have another paper, all the data has been collected. We're waiting to get it, to finalize it. And then that's going to be sent in too. So hopefully uh, this year, we're gonna have a second paper to offer you more, more science. Secondly, uh, this is a book I wrote and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about intraoperative nerve monitoring. This book is called A Perfect Night's Sleep. If you're interested, uh, a lot of times when people travel from a distance to come here, they read this before they come, I highly recommend it. Helps you to feel more confident about this, gives you some testimonials, gives you some science, gives you a little bit of background about me. So I understand how in the world a podiatrist is kind of helping lead the charge of you know looking at uh, restless legs from a different point of view because 98% of you and, and you and doctors that you're seeing probably just are not that aware of this. So what we do again is monitor the nerves in the operating room. We've done this in the past and this is what a readout would be on a monitor that we use. So basically what we're doing is we stimulate the nerve. It sends a message down the nerve. There are le needle electrodes in the muscle and that picks up the electrical activity of the muscle. So more electrical activity means the more, uh, the better functioning the nerve is. So we do a comparison before the tunnel's been open and then once the pressure's been relieved, we then test the nerve again. And a uh, pretty simple concept. But here are some testimonials of uh, various people in the book, but here are the results. And I'll probably start here with Shelley. Uh, these are the results for Shelly, and hopefully you can read that, uh, but uh, might be coming out backwards. It sometimes does that when I do these videos, but anyway, I'll read them to you. But uh, for Shelly's results before decompression, uh, and she's from Michigan, by the way, her, her numbers were 6,800 millivolts before the tunnel was open, and then it went up to 8,600, uh, almost around 2,000 uh, millivolts improvement after compared to before. This is Bonnie, same thing. Here are her numbers. Again, this is objective data showing functional nerve improvement. And there she is with her daughter and uh, granddaughter. She loves to go to movies, very difficult to go to movies and sit. But she's able to go to movies now, and enjoy that time with her uh, daughter and granddaughter. And then finally, Emma. Emma's got a lot of numbers. I'm not gonna read you all these, but just trust me, these are all better numbers. Uh, and here's a picture of Emma. And there she is with her daughter. So Emma comes to us from California. Uh, she is in healthcare, a healthcare provider. She's, she, she actually had surgery during her pregnancy and she wrote a story. She actually wrote part of a chapter here because she's so excited about her improvement. Uh, we had to consult with her specialist so, to make sure she was fine after surgery. Uh, the risk of the medication was deemed to be worse, but she'd be taken for restless legs than the risk of the surgery. And so because of the amount of medication she may have to take. And uh, a very interesting story. Uh, she, she kind of said, I'm having this done, Dr. Anderson. I've researched you and, and kind of helped charge the way through this. And we did it with consult with uh, consulting with other doctors and, and everything went great. So. Uh, but those are the things I want to let you know is, is that everybody, there's, there's real science to this. And I know most of you that are watching might be watching me in the middle of the night. A lot of you 
uh, that come especially from out of state. You're, you're, you're wandering around on YouTube and, and you'll find me there. And, uh, and I really uh, appreciate those of you that travel from a distance because that takes a little bit of faith and hope and hopefully we can help more of you. Uh, my main message with this is understand there's more and more science that we have uh, and I really want you to evaluate this for yourself. Yes, many of you watching, you don't need to consider surgery. Maybe this isn't that bad uh, for you yet, but if it is in the future, understand that you may have that option. So I'm here to let you know there's another window of opportunity for you, that there's another option that you have. There's another way that we can help you get back to having more of a perfect night's sleep. So I wanna thank you for watching. And as always, if you have any comments, we encourage you to comment and also consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. So this is Dr. Anderson and thank you for watching.